everybody and welcome back to the coolest dog training channel right here on YouTube. I'm Tom Davis, America's Canine Educator. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today I am shooting live from my house. Um, been doing some work on the computer this morning and uh, today we're going to drink some coffee and talk about some dogs. So if you guys are getting in here, uh, don't forget to like this video really quick. <clears throat> And uh, I hope over, I hope everyone is well uh, during this coronavirus crazy th crazy thing <clears throat> that's going on, um, something that we've never dealt with. So I hope everyone's being safe and, and healthy and hanging in there. Uh, but anyway, so I'm I'm here to bring you some some dog content today. Uh, today we're going to be talking about something that um, I get a lot of questions about. It's something that I would consider um, my specialty, uh, which is behavior especially with working with uh, aggressive dogs or reactive dogs. Um, and if you guys uh, want, we're going to do a Q&A at the end of this. I'm also going to be announcing the winner for the free online dog training session at the end of this as well. So if you guys get in here, if you're watching it after, don't forget, like this video, and um, we're going to get rolling on the on the leash reactivity dog, dog aggression thing. So a lot of times when... Dog owners have a dog that's reactive on the leash. They automatically assume it's aggressive, which is why in this title, in this video, it's dog aggression because I have to think like the dog owner that doesn't know what it is. Um, so aggression is not really what is happening mostly on the leash. Uh, when your dog exhibits these behaviors, barking, growling, lunging, all of that looks aggressive. Even the, the title uh, in this, the thumbnail in this video is my dog Lakota and all she's doing is she's barking very happily at me for her tug toy. So um, there's, a lot, there's a lot to know about dog behavior and I'm constantly evolving and learning myself. Um, I'm in a situation that uh, I'm surrounded by other professionals that work in my facility as well as um, during normal business hours, a handful of dogs um, that I can watch and study every single day. So I'm grateful for that to constantly re reinvent the wheel and, and get better and sharpen my skills. But um, there is a lot to say about dog reactivity on the leash and what it looks like to the average dog owner or every dog owner for that for that point. Um, so that's what I want to talk about today and uncover that a little bit. So um <clears throat> I'm going to try to visualize and, and paint you guys a picture here and what we're going to be talking about. So imagine you guys are out on the on the uh, leash with your dog and your dog is then uh, barking <clears throat> hysterically, habitually, nonstop. I mean, just going crazy on the leash when they see another dog, which is very common. Um, so what happens is, is your dog is tethered to you and we're going to be talking about leash reactivity. Uh, the most here. So paint that picture. Your dog is going to be on the leash, tethered to you. They see a dog, they react. They're barking um, the whole nine. And so what it looks like is a lot of aggression in, in your eyes. Is your dog doesn't look nice. Your dog doesn't look friendly. The intentions behind this doesn't look good. But honestly, a lot of times that is created out of frustration um, it's creative it, out of vocalization, which we're going to talk about here in a little bit. But I just want you to know that there's a significant difference between a dog actually becoming reactive and a dog be becoming um, becoming uh, just frustrated on the leash and aggressive and whatever. So there's there's different things. So I want to show you guys an example. So like, oh, you can't really see it, but oh, this is what I was going to show you. So here's a lighter, right? So when we talk about reactions, it's basically taking one thing and then another thing and adding them together and getting a, a reaction. And so that's what like this is. This is just a lighter. And without any type of uh, other thing, that's all it is. That's all it's ever going to be. But if I do the lint and then add a little bit of stuff, then it becomes a flame. It becomes fire. So the reaction, I, I actually just thought of this um, to give you guys this example, but this makes the most sense. And I try to use this analogy with my clients. The reaction makes fire. Without, without them coming together, there's nothing. So that's how you want to look at your, your dog on the leash with another dog is it, what's creating the reaction? What's creating your dog to react? And a lot of times it's the leash and uh, the demeanor of the other dog. But... 
Um, I hope that that like makes sense to you guys, but that's what it comes down to is your dog is going to react under the circumstances of their environment. So, um, the main cause to that is the leash actually. So <laughs> Taylor, so what happens is, is the leash will create frustration from the dog. So the dog wants to go and see the other dog. Cause you got to realize that the dog that you're walking can smell the other dog for miles away. Um, so they, they know about each other. If they live in the same area and they've, and they're walked frequently and that's why dogs mark and so on and so forth, they're going to, they're going to be able to, to know each other and they're smelling each other from a distance. So they've already smelt each other. And then when they see each other, you're getting that reaction because what they want to do as a dog is they want to go and they want to see the other dog. They say, Hey, they either say, Hey, who are you? What the heck are you doing? So there's that kind of confrontation of like, Hey, what are you doing here? Who are you? Um, there's the excited, Hey, like I know you We're buddies, we're friends. I've smelt you for a while. We've played a couple times, or you just get the dog that just loves every other dog and wants to go play. And you can just imagine that, that type of breed that or dog that's just sitting there like ready to go. And so, and then they get, they get halted by the leash and then the leash creates the, and the dog kind of looks back like, Hey, like let, let me, let me go. And then what happens to the dog owner is the dog owner also then becomes a certain way. So you're walking, you know, doing your walk, having a, having a, just a normal walk. And then all of a sudden you see another dog and then your dog reacts and then you react and it creates this reaction. So it's the same thing I've been talking about with the lighter is normally it's just this and you're out for a walk and you're doing nothing and then boom, you see another dog and there's a reaction. So, um, so anyway, so that's like the general idea of the majority of dogs who are reactive on the leash. And the second part of that is just talking about behavior in general, um, uh, uh, confidence building stuff, lack of confidence, um, not good leadership skills and on the leash, which we're going to talk about in a minute. I'm going to have a little bit more coffee. Good morning. Guten Morgen. Good afternoon. Guten Tag. Um, wherever you guys are from, hello. Welcome to the live stream. If you guys are watching this in the future, thank you so much for checking me out on my channel. Uh, if you guys haven't yet, don't forget to hit that like button and obviously subscribe to my channel for more stuff like this. So moving forward from that, that's like the first sector. That's like... That's the majority of dogs who react. That's, that's normally what you're going to get from dogs who are reactive like that is those three variables that I just talked about where you're going to get the dog that, uh, again, is like excited or is nervous or confrontational or protective and so on and so forth. And then it chains from there. So <clears throat> Veronica is here from Australia. Hello, Veronica. So... Moving forward from that, I want, to I, want to, I want to dive a little bit deeper, and then we're going to answer some questions here in a little bit. Um, <clears throat> now, there's also a lot of dogs who are reactive because of their owners and their relationship with their owners. So what happens is, is if a dog, if you don't have a good relationship with your dog, so say you go out for a walk and you leash them up, and they are in charge the whole time. They're darting through the door. They're darting through your gate. They're darting on the leash. You really don't have a lot of say in what goes on on that walk, which then may be just the general idea of you not having the best relationship with your dog in general, and then that will make them not feel that confident with you. That's the other big, 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 big thing that I see, and in, 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 as you guys know, if you've watched any of my videos, uh, well, as of lately, uh, it's hard to, to do these types of videos, but my normal content is dogs coming in with severe reactivity issues or aggression issues or dog that has been working with all these other trainers and doesn't have the opportunity to be successful for whatever reason. So I'm kind of like the problem solver in that case. <clears throat> what you think, big bud? <laughs> so again, that's a good example. So somebody just, uh, one of my dogs just barked outside and he came over to check it out. So this is prime time squirrel. Yeah, no, this is prime time uh, stuff here. It's exactly what we're talking about is if, if another dog reacts to a certain thing, then the other dog is going to react. And it kind of chain links from that. And that's exactly what humans do. Humans do exactly what Thompson, my St. Bernard, just did, which is of that, of this girl. Come here, Koda. Say hi. 
this girl's outside. She sees something she doesn't really like. She alert barks. She goes, hey. And then that sounds the alarm. That's basically what dogs do to humans is when you're out on your walk and we're going to go back to chain to you not having any control and you're kind of just out texting, talking on your phone, doing whatever, and you have no control over your dog, um, which is okay as long as you're then able to have control over your dog. Um, which I talk about a lot. If you're out with your dog, like same thing with me, like if I'm sending an email and I just got to get a walk in with my dogs and I don't really have time, at any given time throughout that walk, I can tell them to heal and they're not leaving my side. So, But that's besides the point. So having the confidence on the leash has a lot to do with your dog's reactivity. So if you're having problems with your dog reacting and you're having problems with your dog being overstimulated on the leash and being very vocal, um, there's a lot to do with your obedience and that has a lot to do with your relationship with your dog as well. So that's what, that's probably the other biggest sector. And I'm going to dive into a, a, a little bit more, uh, segments, but, but that really does play the biggest role in the relationship with your dog. Having, having a good relationship on the leash is huge. So if you can tell your dog to leave it, you can tell your dog to heal. You can tell your dog like, right. Like again, like if my dog's outside, she sees something, she alert barks once. If you guys play it back, you might be able to hear it. Just one bark and that was it. Now, if I needed to go out and say, hey, thank you so much for letting me know. Now go lay down. I could. So making sure that your control is, it, it, the control is the biggest thing. I can't, I, can't, I can't tell you how many people go in and, and get, get, in, get into a situation where they're so... They're so they're, they're, they just don't have a good relationship with their dog. So they come in and their dog's pulling them. Their dog's jumping up and down. Their dog is whining. Their dog is barking. Their dog is doing all of these different things. And a lot of times what happens is, is the owner says, I can't, I don't know why my dog is so reactive. I don't know why my dog won't listen to me. I don't know why my dog is doing X, Y, and Z. And they just have no control across the board. So control is a really big thing. Um, but again, so recapping a little bit on dog reactivity on the leash is a lot of times it's not aggression. So a lot of times your dog actually doesn't want to hurt other dogs regardless of what it looks like. Um, the main components to your dog being reactive is the, the, the frustration that they feel on the leash. When they see another dog, they may feel vulnerable. They may feel frustrated because they can't go see the dog. Um, and that makes them vulnerable, which will make them aggressive sounding or protective on the leash and so on and so forth. And then the third or maybe the second component, not sure where we're at, is just your dog having confidence on the leash with you in general. If, you're, if you don't have a good relationship with your dog, then you're not going to be able to, to, to go out and be successful on the leash. Um, the other thing that has a lot to do with that too, guys, is your, the exposure of your dog. Now, this is something interesting that I've never talked about that I just popped up when I was taking notes about this segment. Um, and again, if you guys are joining me, don't forget to, to like this video. We have about 160 people in here. If you guys uh, hit the like button really quick. And if you're joining me after, thank you so much for joining me. Um, and we're going to do a Q&A, so I'm going to be answering your questions for as long as you guys have questions after this, so don't worry, we're going to get to that after. Um, and then I, I am going to announce the winner of the online session too, and then maybe we'll do another one at, uh, at the end of this video, so just keep watching. And um, But the, the other thing that I've never talked about is exposure. <clears throat> so exposure with dog behavior could work against you if your dog is overexposed, if your dog is over-socialized and under-socialized. And, and that doesn't, that, that doesn't, I mean, it's just dog dependent. I'm just giving you guys ideas of like why your dog is so reactive. And I want to talk about the over and under exposure. I've never talked about it in any of my training sessions. I just thought about it today. And so I find that like, for an example, dogs who are very exposed to other dogs and ha have, have been exposed to them in a dog park setting or in a daycare setting where they only go to see other dogs and play, 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 which is great. I'm glad that dogs are out playing. Uh, I don't necessarily love dog parks, but that's a different story. But if your dog is exposed to other dogs in a way of only play and they don't know any other off switch, which means if you can't control your dog when there's other dogs around because they're overexposed because they're used to playing so much, 
that will also cause a lot of dog reactivities because when they see another dog, they're just so used to going and playing and playing and playing. And so that overexposure can probably cause a lot of dog reactivity as well. They want, they just want to get off the end of that leash and go play, play and play. So overexposure could definitely make your dog more reactive in the future and then underexposure as well. So it's the other end of the spec, the other end of the spectrum, making sure that you're able to expose your dog, but then also, uh, or, or sorry, uh, to make, making sure that you also expose your dog, but not like crazy overexposure where they just, if they see another dog, their assumption is, is we're going to play. And that's kind of setting up a, a false relationship with the dog or false expectation of the dog is every single time you see a dog and you let them play, the problem is, is then when you see a dog and that dog doesn't want to play, or maybe it's just rude to let your dog go play with their dogs, it creates that reactivity and that excitement and that overstimulation. And again, when you're peaking with animals, when you're peaking the, those levels of excitement and you're, you're basically teaching the dog that when this scenario happens, or again, like we're talking about this reaction happens, then you're going to create that. You don't, you don't ever really want to create that, that assumption and that routine of overexcitement. If it, if it happens, great. If it doesn't, it doesn't. <clears throat> but moving forward from that, the lack of exposure can also do that, create that reactivity, create that frustration, create that vulnerability, create that anxiety around other dogs because they're not exposed. They don't see many other dogs. They don't know what to do with another dog. It's kind of like us when we're not exposed to really anybody or anything, a middle, like literally not exposing ourselves to anything and then throwing us into the Mall of America or something really busy. It's going to be very overwhelming. Um, it's going to be very anxious for us, so on and so forth. So overexposure and underexposure is something I wanted to talk about just because I've never talked about it. And I thought that that was a good, um, good way to look at it too. Because um, we see that a lot in daycare. Um, when dogs come to daycare and then they come to our training class, they have the assumption of, well, I'm here to play. And then they can't really calm down for training and it creates a problem. And then they get whiny and they get anxious and they get vocal and so on and so forth. That creates a problem. So anyway, I've never looked at it like that. So I wanted to, I wanted to say that. Um, so the other thing is, is just what do you look like as a handler? Um, so again, like your reaction to the dog when they react can also make them reactive. If you're not a confident handler, with an insecure dog, two wrongs don't make a right. The best thing that you should be doing is building confidence with your dog by going out and setting really low expectations in an environment that isn't gonna overwhelm you guys and isn't gonna distract you guys and make you guys any worse than you already are as far as confidence goes. So confidence works both ways. Confidence very simply to get better at is to go out and set expectations realistically, realistically expectations, realistic expectations, going out and doing really, really easy stuff and then progressionally getting better and exposing and getting better as a dog handler and a dog owner and a leader. Okay. Um, so I think that that's it for the dog reactivity stuff. Now I want to answer some of your questions. Uh, if you have any other questions about dog reactivity, leave them in the comments below after this video, I'd be happy to help. Um, and so the winner of last week's, um, or la last video's giveaway on the online live is Angela Decker. Uh, Angela, if you're watching this, congratulations. You have won the free online sessions. If you guys don't know, you can work with me directly online pretty much like this, except obviously very tailored to you. You can click the link in the description below, um, or you can visit my website, americascanineducator.com. Uh, has all of the details. So now I'm going to get into your Q&A, which is everyone's favorite. Uh, we're going to talk about all the questions you guys have about your dogs, and I'll pretty much stay here uh, as long as you guys keep watching. So uh, this is the great part about the, the online live is because uh, there's so many different categories and so many different discussion boards going on at once, and I'll do my best to <clears throat> do this. Uh, Lisa says, yeah, my income has been affected. Um, obviously, yeah, so uh, it, it's really tough right now for everybody. I feel for everybody that's uh, going through this. Um, um, but Alyssa, 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 I think it's Alyssa. Um, I have a ton of videos you can watch on uh, a lot of uh, dog reactivity and aggression and uh, um, anxiety and all that stuff. Uh, let's see. How, Adriana asks, how can I get a super dominant shepherd mix that's very dog reactive to behave and get along with other dogs? He's been in 14 fights at the rescue. He's not my dog. I train with him. I don't use treats. Um, well, if your dog doesn't like other dogs and he's shown you 14 times, 
don't allow him around other dogs, like, ever. That's a terrible idea to continue to let him be around dogs. Lady Max 16 asks, how do I get my German Shepherd who is one tomorrow not to bark and pull on the leash when we see another dog? Well, that's a perfect uh, example of, of exactly what we're talking about here in this video. Um, Lady Max 16, um, you, have to, you, have to, you have to talk about your control and what you're doing with your dog. You can't just get an animal on a leash, um, have a lot of love, um, but be roommates, which means you don't have a lot of clarity in your relationship. It happens all the time. Your dog doesn't really actually know behaviors. You haven't taught your dog behaviors. And what that means is, is if you can turn around and ask your dog to sit down and stay without using any food or using any treats or using any rewards, you have a good relationship with your dog. But 96% of people cannot do that. So my suggestion to you is train your dog. Um, if your dog is reactive on the leash, that's normal. You're getting an animal and expecting it to be a good roommate and expecting it to coexist with humans, which is very difficult. Um, I mean, I know it's a domesticated animal, but it's still an animal. It's got four legs. It wants to, it's very primal. It's very instinctual. Um, they they want to go out. I mean, it, it's dogs are, dogs are very instinctual. So if you're not doing things to have to, to, to put into place to be successful with your dog, then it's not going to happen. So you just have to make sure you're going out and you're training new behaviors. If your dog is pulling on a leash, that's normal. You haven't taught it not to. If your dog is barking at other dogs, why wouldn't they bark at other dogs? What are you doing to tell them that that's not, that's not good? Um, okay. So anyway, uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Ryan asked, we have a golden retriever mix that is a rescue. She became very act up. She became very act up a few months ago after we've got her. I've been really focusing on her obedience on leash. Good job, Ryan. That's good. That's what you should be doing. Um, Starks asks, I live in an apartment where aggression is not allowed. It makes me anxious when we see other dogs because I never know how my collie is going to respond in tunnel vision. Um, Starks era, it's just about control and obedience and practice. Um, and, and make sure that you practice. Like I, I literally tell people to go out with your leash without your dog and practice yourself. If you aren't a good leader and you're not cool, calm, and confident, you're not gonna be able to be successful. So go out and work on your breathing, work on your state of mind, working on how to control your emotions before you bring the dog out because it's not fair. So that's the first thing I would do and then continue to work on your obedience and increments um, and, and that should get better. Um, Gordo ask any tips on dog's reactivity in the car? Um, it's the same thing I would say on the leash. Like if your dog is super, there's two things. I mean, for me and like what you guys saw earlier in this video, if my dog is reactive, I always like, ex I, I always respect that because they think that their job, especially if you have a very protective d dog, uh, breed of a dog, um, but regardless, dogs are pretty protective of their owners. And so I always like have that, that gray area. If a dog barks out of the car, I'm like, okay, why? Okay, thank you. Now knock it off because it's, uh, you know, somebody pushing a cart by. Um, so being able to correct that behavior, excuse me, when it happens is the best thing to do. To do. Um, a dog that acts out of instincts is, like I said, it's fair. And then you need to be able to turn that off. And it's not so much about like, hey, I don't want my dog barking like the majority of you do. But the problem is, is your dog's continuing to stress him, him, his or herself out uh, for no reason. So you have to be a good leader and a good person in charge and a good manager and a director and all the above to say like, okay, thank you for handling this. Now turn it off. So you can use a leash inside the car and simply correct your dog in practice. Go to a busy area, uh, a grocery store, Lowe's or something like that and correct your dog as it happens, but making sure you're marking it with your verbal so you don't want the equipment to ever be the dependency on whether your dog does something or not, making sure that your dog is listening to you, uh, as well as reinforcing it with the uh, equipment that your dog um, is not going to want to continue to bark with. Uh, so King Chucky says, how can my wife practice self-protection with my lab and chow mix? There's nine months and very energetic. Um, the best thing to do, um, because protection work is extremely hard to do by yourself, is find a trainer in your area that can help you do that. Um, that's the best thing to do. Um, real dog protection work takes about a year and a half. It usually costs anywhere from ten to fifteen thousand dollars for a dog, so it's a lot of work uh, to do it right. And usually, all a dog needs to know is how to bark on command. So that's one of the first things you can do is teach your teach your dog how to bark on command, because um, that's really all the deterrent you ever would need. Um, 
Let's see, Alinda asks, tips for dogs that listen well with the e-collar at first, but now seems to ignore or take long to respond. I've been pairing the stem with my commands and don't use it as punishment. Well, that's great. Um, I think that there there is a certain point uh, along your dog training exercises that maybe you should just go back down to the basics and the leash um, to teach your dog how to do things faster. If your dog's not responding to the e-collar levels that you're using, uh, you can certainly go up on the levels just to get your dog's attention a little bit more. Because as, as you know, uh, when we use the remote collars 99.9 percent of the time it's not corrective not aversive it doesn't hurt the dog it's very very uh, communicative base it gives you the opportunity for your dog to go off leash with responsibility to know that you have that with your dog so um, don't forget to go back to your your basics with the leash to teach your dog maybe what you're supposed to be doing as well as not being afraid to go up in your in your numbers depending on what collar you have which is why i always recommend getting a, a good e-collar like a dogtra um, and you can find all of their stuff on doctor.com. All right. Jojo asks tips on a dog that is jealous of other smaller dogs at the home. She attacks him when he plays. Uh, so we call that policing or I call that policing. Anyway, when I say we, I think I say me. Uh, so anyway, maybe, I don't know. So uh, policing is something that happens quite frequently in dog uh, in, in homes um, because basically there's another dog that may be grumpy, maybe um, older, maybe like just policing in general that they don't want the other dog to play because of insecurity issues or because they just don't want other dogs to have fun. Um, so it's really not fair to your younger dog that is playing and having a good time for the other dog to constantly be attacking them, going after them and telling them that they can't play. I don't think that that's fair. I don't think it's fair to the other dog. I don't think it's fair really. If your dog is actually that's attacking is getting really stressed about what's going on. I don't think it's fair to anybody involved. So if it continues to happen, I would simply just um, maybe work on obedience with the other dog to teach them to stay. So you can teach them the place you can teach them to stay. And I think just having the obedience and control is going to help you ultimately with that, 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 uh, that problem. But I think at the end of the day, um, if it's a continual thing, I think you have to work on their relationship to help them understand each other a little bit more. Um, and that's one thing I try to tell people to do that, you know, there's not a quick fix for dogs or animals in general. You can't just go in and say, Hmm, try this, try this, try here, Here's this pen. Here's this lighter. Here's these glasses. Here's this hat. Like, you know, go in and try, you know, the, the tools, they don't, they don't do everything. And, and, and obedience training doesn't do everything. So <clears throat> I think going back down to the basics of getting your dogs uh, more associated and helping their relationships. So they understand each other a little bit more, I think is the best thing to do. So go out and rebuild their relationship. So maybe uh, they create a better relationship so they're, they don't have that <clears throat> pressure towards each other, that social pressure towards each other, um, but as well as correcting the other dog when that happens because it's not appropriate. You as a leader watching your one dog attack the other dog, and I'm not saying you're sitting back and watching. I'm just saying if you're not doing anything about it effectively, then you're watching. So do all of those things. All right. Um, Veronica says, I've been sitting out on my front porch of my house with my seven-month-old shepherd as people walk past and their dogs cross the road to get him used to seeing at a distance. Um, how would you gradually get closer? Well, Veronica, it's a good question. Um, I would honestly go off your property and work on that because the more you have dogs um, on your property, especially a shepherd, a very like, hey, I'm here, I'm protecting the area. And most dogs are like that, but shepherds have a little bit more... Um, a little bit more in them than, than most dogs. Um, so the next step is to just go off your property and go into a neutral zone and try to find dogs on your walk. During this unfortunate pandemic of the coronavirus, there's a lot of people out walking their dogs. So this is a great opportunity for you to go down a couple blocks and work on all the stuff you're working on exactly at home uh, in a neutral place and just use lots of positive reinforcement. Good job, buddy. Treats, ball toys, tugs. Lots of, lots of, lots of, hey, sugar on top when you do something really great. Hey, we have almost 200 people here in this room. If you guys do me a favor, go ahead and I'm going to maybe chug the rest of this coffee. You guys go ahead and like this video really quick. Uh, I hope you guys are enjoying this. We're going to continue to answer questions because, um, you know, it's Sunday morning. I hope everyone's, or afternoon, depending on where you're from. I appreciate you guys joining me. I truly do. Um, thank you. And then later today, we might go in and teach some new stuff. Um, if you guys have any um, suggestions of what to teach when we go in, you can leave the comments in the comments below after this video is posted. Um, <clears throat> I 
Okay, let's see. Kitten Foster Adventures. Ooh, hello, all you kitten, cool cats and kittens, or whatever that Carol Baskin says. Tiger King is crazy, y'all. That that is a crazy, crazy show. All right, let's see. What are the best tips for an extremely stubborn Tibetan Mastiff? I'm teaching him place, place and release, but she's she's so damn lazy she doesn't release no matter what I have in my hands or treats. Well, you just have to remember that the release command is something that is is to the advantage of the dog, and if they make the decision not to release. That's okay. Um, but what I would be doing is maybe, because here's the problem, is if you teach your dog a place, the, typically for very large dogs such as Thompson, um, he they're going to lay down. And so maybe stop doing the place and then down stay and then release and maybe just do a sit and then a release. Because if your dog's already laying down, especially a big dog, the, the likelihood of them continuing to lay down is going to be more likely than if they're just standing and then breaking. So just keep working at it. And um, it's a very good question, but um, you know, it's, it's not unfortunate, but there are certain breeds that just aren't as enthusiastic as working as, as others. So, <clears throat> um, Hey, if you guys want, uh, if we can get this video, uh, up to 150 likes right now, I'll, uh, I'll show you Lola, which is my third dog, which a lot of people have never met. Um, very few people have met her. Maybe you've seen her in pictures. Um, she's my dog I've had since 16, and I can. Uh, she's she's still in the house right now, so I could I could grab her if you guys want to see her and meet her. Uh, let me know through the like button and and let me know, and I'll I'll grab her and give you her little story. She's about 16, 17 years old, um, and she's my first like real real dog. And there's there's a couple stories about her uh, that kind of got me into dog training. If you guys are interested, uh, let me know. All right, any tips or advice for dogs who have severe separation from owners? Yeah, uh, Noel. So just um, turn the leadership up and turn the love down. A lot of times when dogs have an unhealthy relationship with their owners, it's because it's unhealthy and they depend on them for happiness. They depend on them for a lot of different things that they shouldn't codepend be codependent on. Um, like you want to be a good leader and build confidence and let the dog know direction, but you don't want to have that overbearing love. Talking to your dog is way too much. It creates anxiety. When you leave, the dog gets nervous because you're so, so stop talking to your dog a little bit and continue to just reinforce leaving and coming back and, and practicing that. Uh, as much as you possibly can. One thing that creates a lot of separation anxiety that people make a mistake of doing is just telling telling the dog that they're leaving. That happens uh, a lot where you literally will tell the dog, hey, I, I love you so much. I'll be back in an hour. The dog's marked that you're leaving. No good. So stop talking to your dog is the best thing. Um, Travis asks, how old is Lakota when you've got her to the level she's at regarding her heel and her stay commands? A good question, Travis. For those of you who don't know, Lakota is my Dutch Shepherd who's primarily in a lot of my videos recently because we don't have a lot of clients coming in right now because everything's shut down. Um, so Lakota is about three and change, maybe four. I'm really bad with that. Um, but she's like three or four. Um, and she, she learned – actually, if you go all the way back, Travis, to the beginning of my videos – or like the majority of my videos, you'll see her when she was like this big, uh, literally doing focused healing, placing and staying before she was probably three months. Um, she was, she's, that's what I tell people. Like when I, when I demo Lakota, everyone's like, wow, they're so impressed with that. Um, and I'm like, it's more impressive when you see a puppy, uh, this big do it. And she was doing that. And I, and I had, you know, have to, it has a lot to do with her genetics and her breeding. And she's a Dutch shepherd. She wants to work. She knew that I wanted to work with her. So if you guys go back to the beginning stages of my training with Lakota, you'll see this cute little, uh, little black dog doing all of the stuff that she does now. So it's actually pretty impressive, not on my end, but on her end, because she's like really with it. Um, why did you teach Lakota three, dif three different languages just for fun? Yeah, it's just for fun. Um, honestly, like I teach my dogs, I taught Lakota different languages because I usually train with her. She's my demo dog. So I'll bring her out when I'm training. So when I'm training another dog, I like using different languages because I can control her and she does three different languages. She does, well, she does three different commands, languages. So she doesn't know them, but she knows three different three different language commands. So it'll be English, um, German, and and French. And so I did that mainly for fun. But then it actually does come a huge role in 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 what we're doing uh, with my training because I can tell her to do something, and it's not going to stress the dog that I'm handling out, and vice versa. Thompson is uh, my dog, not Taylor's. Laura, 
Um, let's see. Yeah, let's see. <clears throat> All right, if you guys have questions, go ahead and pop them down. Uh, my one-year-old Border Collie mix, when she's working, she runs through all of her commands quickly before I ask them, and I don't use treats, um, but we'll use a ball at the end. Suggestions? Uh, Tara Butler asked that. So, Tara, it's a good question. A lot of, a lot of people who do obedience have, have problems with. I would suggest um, to watch the video I just did uh, with Lakota, my last video um, that was just produced and put out, I think, yesterday or the day before. Uh, and it goes over how to start weaning away from food, but it also really highlights the ability to compartmentalize behaviors with your dog. So I always challenge people to ask your dog to do basic stuff. So literally, if you can look at your dog and say sit and they sit, down and they down, back into a sit, then you know that your dog knows those behaviors. I would say that 90, I say I would say mid 90s to high 90s, which is almost everybody, their relationship with their dog, if you ask them to do individual behaviors, let's say sit and down. If you ask your dog to sit and they sit, do you guys think that you guys could do that? Do you think that, you can actually ask your dog to sit and then down and then sit again and your dog will do those behaviors really clear with a lot of clarity. And I'm not saying like perfect right now. I'm just saying like in general, like if you had a couple goes at it, would you be able to get your dog to sit and then down and then sit again? And so Hold on guys, we're uh, reconnecting here. Um, so anyway, so that's, that's the big thing is just being able to compartmentalize behaviors and a lot of times dog owners do not know how to do that. So... Anyway, Shannon asked, I was told I was told I should do some type of search work with my pup, Redbone Coonhound, uh, to keep him mentally stimulated. Absolutely. That's a great idea, Shannon. Very easy. Everybody should be doing this with their dog in quarantine or in general. A really so I think a lot of times dog owners, you guys out there, I'm talking to you, I'm doing this for you, I'm having coffee with you. I hope this is fun. If it is, go ahead and like this video. If you're here, if you're watching this after, thank you so much for joining us. This is a really good time. Um, but uh, if you want to teach your dog how to find something, it's so, so simple. I think so many times people overlook that they're not trainers, they're not going to training. You can do everything that I've done with dogs as a professional and pretty much anybody else for the most part at your house with what you have right now. And that's the great thing about working with dogs is, you know, like you're watching a tutorial on something to do with your dog and you can do it right then and there. You don't have to go to Lowe's and buy tools and get this whole project. And it's really, like you guys can literally do it right now. Um, and so just find what they like to answer your question, find what they like and go hide it. Tell them to sit and stay, take their ball, take their toy and hide it throughout the house and they have to go search for it. And if they're not, if they're a little confused on like what the heck's going on, make it easy for them. Like an Easter egg hunt, make it easy, put them on leash, bring them to a spot. You go, yay, good job. Good. Find it. Start marking it. Good. Find it. Good. Find it. Good. Find it. Whatever. And then you go to another couch and then they search there or whatever. And that's how you would start that. So it's a great question. <clears throat> um, you should post a video. I know I should do that. Post a video of fun and games. Um, 100, 146, 150. I will show you guys Lola and give her her backstory. Um, uh, do you know, do you know why pit bulls look sad, but actually act happy? I think that that Rachel, I think that pit bulls, we got 150. I'll show you in a second guys. I think that um, pit bulls just have a bad rap in general. Um, so I think people just have the, 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 they just perceive pit bulls that way that they look, I think it's emotional. I don't necessarily think pit bulls look sad at all. I think that they're actually pretty happy, um, regal animals. Um, <laughs> Kelly, thank you so much that you said that I'm awesome. I appreciate that. I'm just out here just trying to help people with their dogs. And I appreciate you guys so much for watching. I'm grateful. Um, if I didn't have you guys, I wouldn't um, be able to do a lot of the stuff I can do. Um, so I appreciate you guys very much. You, you don't realize that the YouTube community that we've grown here pushes me and influences me uh, continually to do more things. When I'm sitting here brainstorming on um, should I do a should I do a segment on this? Should I dress up and, and, and try to capture something for people to help them? I think about you guys and I think about how that can help um, thousands or potentially millions of people. And that's, I'm so grateful for that. I got into the industry to help dogs. Um, and now I'm on a level right now where we're continuing to grow right here on YouTube. 
um, through through that. And for you guys sharing and commenting and liking and being part of this community means a lot to me because it 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 helps me fulfill my goals, dreams, and passions as as in life. I I just want to help dogs and their owners succeed and be successful. It's more than dog training. It's building a relationship with their dogs. And I think that that's the biggest issue across the board with people is is they don't realize that it's not so much dog training. I'm not in the dog business. I'm more in the people business. I'm more into helping people understand their dog. So it's so much more than a dog training community. It's, It's really about helping dogs across the board. So I appreciate you guys giving me the opportunity to, to do all of that stuff. Um, let's see. What do you do when an older dog teaches your new puppy bad behaviors? Uh, you correct the one that's teaching the things. So, uh, anyway, I'm going to, I'm going to talk about some, I got some, I got some cool, exciting stuff. I'm going to, I'm going to go over, uh, that has exclusivity, uh, to some of you guys on YouTube that we're going to talk about in a minute. Um, at the end of this, let's see right, Lola. If you guys want to see Lola, uh, you guys keep asking questions too. I'll answer them in a minute. Um, but Lola, so I'll just show you. Uh, so this is Lola. Oh, 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 Hey, sweetie. So this is my first girl here. Um, she's about 16. Um, and she, so she's on the ground, so I don't want to like be out of breath and tell you guys. But she, um, let's see if you can see her here. That's her. That's what she's always done with me. So Lola, guys, she's my dog. Um, I've had her uh, since I was in high school, and she is like my first real dog. Um, that and she knows I'm talking about her. She can't hear that good, but she knows. She always stays like next to me, so that's why she kind of became my dog. She kind of pushed me into the direction of finding, um, you know, my career and working with dogs and my passion because of the love and the lessons that she's taught me over the 16 years, 16 Christmases, birthdays, uh, all Easter's, all that stuff. Um, and she's, she's older. She's doing really well. She likes to hang out in the truck, um, but she gets CBD. She's a little arthritic, but she still plays and whoops all the other dogs. But Lola's a dog that um, we got as a – we adopted her at a, a pet adoption at a pet smart. She was there, and uh, she was the last one, and her name is Lola Sweetheart. And so uh, we adopted her. We brought her home. I was young, um, you know, kid, and I love dogs. I always have loved dogs. They've been a part of my life forever. And so when we brought her home, she like would sleep. She would she would only sleep with me. She would sleep outside my door. She was just always a part of me. And then as I grew up and I went to um, did a little bit of community college and then kind of bounced around uh, from from apartment to you know finding different places. And she always went with me. And she kind of just connected to me. And so my older dog Lola, she uh, that's her. And she's not really ever in any of my videos because she's older, so she doesn't really train a lot. She's usually in my truck. She sleeps in my truck 90% of the time. That's what she loves the most. It's her little cave. It's her comfort. She can't hear good, so she feels vulnerable maybe in the house with the other dogs and um, and, and so on and so forth. So anyway, so that's Lola. She's my, she's my older dog. Uh, I love her to death. Uh, it's, I'm going to be sad when she goes, but it's not going to be anything. Uh, like every single day with her is a blessing. I'm so grateful to, to have her in my life continually. Um, and when she goes, I'm going to be sad, but I'm not going to be upset and it's not going to be like this big, big thing. Um, I'm just grateful to have her each day. Uh, I can't believe she's still around. Um, she's outlived all of my friends' dogs. I mean, it's just crazy. It's like this ongoing thing of like Lola just never just, she's just great. (laughs) She's the best. So anyway, let's answer some more questions here. Um, so anyway, hope you guys are, we're going to answer some more questions. Uh, I'm going to have some coffee. Um, if you guys have any questions about anything about me, you can leave them now. Um, I appreciate you guys very much for watching, following along, liking, subscribing, commenting. Uh, it means the world to me. It, it continues to give me motivation to help you guys. The more you guys, um, you know, and, that, and that's the thing is like there is a fine line between me, um, you know, like if you guys, I weed out all the bad stuff. Like I don't, I delete all people who are negative and things like that and and uh, just people who are hating on the keyboard warriors who have never even owned a dog, but 
it's the people like you that um, hang out with me and, and, and want to learn about their dogs. And um, so we're going to answer some questions. And then at the end of this, I also, um, I have some, I have some, not important news, but I have a new thing that I'm working on developing for you guys on YouTube, specifically for my YouTube audience. Um, and it's going to be quite exciting. It's going to be very exclusive. Um, if it's something you guys want to do, uh, I'm going to do it because this is fun. So let's get into some questions. And if you guys are uh, watching this in the future, uh, don't forget to like and leave a comment and ask me your questions about your dog. Uh, if you're here now, 187 of you, uh, go ahead and like this video. I appreciate you guys very much for hopping on here on this Sunday, I think, morning. <laughs> All right, Rick asks, uh, my two-year-old lab is calm and knows his stuff, but sometimes off-leash, he has his mind of his own. His recall is at his own pace. E-caller arrives this week. Any ideas? I appreciate your channel. Rick, I appreciate you, brother. Thank you so much for joining me and listening to me and watching me and trusting me with your dog. It means the world. Um, what I would do, Rick, is uh, watch myself and then all the other great trainers on YouTube about remote callers. Make sure you have a really good idea on what you're doing. Introduce it at a very low level. Work with your long line. Uh, introduce it properly. And I think that the difference is really night and day with the remote collar. So I, don't, I think you're already on the right track. You're getting some equipment that's going to help that reliability of the recall. Because um, who would have thought a dog off leash chasing squirrels, bunnies, rabbits, deer are going to be more interested in that than you, uh, right? Go figure. So uh, the remote collar is the best way to go for that as far as reliability. So um, you're already on the good good track, brother. Um, if you have any questions in the future, you can work with me online uh, and we can go over uh, all of that uh, with you directly. And you can, you can do that online with my online facility academy. <clears throat> okay, uh, Sarah asks, will you review the questions that were missed? Um, we're going to go over that, Sarah, in a little bit. We're going to be able to give you guys the option to ask. I'm going to answer everyone's question. Um, uh, let's see. I have a large German sh cave ass. I have a large German shepherd male that thinks his goal in life is to protect me. I started working with um, herding ball, and it's given him something to do and really making him think. It's a great idea to, to get his mind going. Cave Dave. I'm assuming your name is Dave. Apologize if it's no, but Dave, um, that's a great idea. And again, like we talked about in the beginning of this video, dogs who are uh, overly reactive and they think that they have to protect, um, they, they don't assume that. They think that. So you need to make sure that the, the, the relationship doesn't go that way. right? It, it, here's the analogy I give all my clients, and you guys may have seen this on... Uh, some of my older videos, I talk about this very frequently. If if you guys are at work, and take this with a grain of salt, try to think this through. Just pretend if you if you worked somewhere and you had a manager and a boss and all that stuff, and somebody drove a car straight through your work, who's going to be in charge? You're going to look for, I mean, obviously with safety regulations, but you're going to say, okay, where's the manager? Where's the boss? That's that's human nature. We always are, are looking for somebody who who is not necessarily overpowering or... Um, or any of those things that you're afraid of or anything like that. But what you want to do is you want to create a, a relationship with your dog that – my freaking hair is going crazy right now. You want to create a relationship with your dog that is – is um, it puts you in charge. So that that's – leaders lead. That's right. That's what you have to do is you, you – if your dog is saying, hey, I'll handle this, there's a reason your dog is doing that. There's a reason your dog is, is thinking that they are, they are handling – situations. It's not, it's not a good thing. Um, at, at an early age, people think it's cute and it creates all these bad, bad things. So anyway, so just take charge, do more obedience, do more threshold stuff with your dog, um, and continue to be a good leader. Um, but you're doing good by giving them something to do, giving their brain something to do. Laura asks, what's your favorite drink? Um, I don't know. I pretty much only drink here. Seriously. I have water, coffee, beer. <laughs> uh, I don't do really anything else. Um, I've been doing like, I mean, obviously I, I love coffee. It's one of my good drinks, puts you in a good mood, uh, puts you in a good vibe, but um, that's pretty much it. Uh, my dog was almost attacked as a pup. My dog was almost attacked, hmm, interesting, as a pup and is terrified by, by other dogs now. Um, how can I introduce nice dogs to teach him that other dogs are friendly? And it's a one-year-old German Shepherd. Elizabeth, I would just go out and <clears throat> find the right dogs. I always suggest people to find like a group class in your area. Finding a group class um, will give you structure. It'll give you safety. 
it'll give you um, like a, a clear head knowing that everybody's in the same position of wanting to do better with their dog and everybody's paid to be there to, to train with their dog. Um, and then also I think it comes down to your dog uh, being structured around other dogs and creating that confidence with other dogs. So that's the best thing I would do is try to find, if your dog has been attacked or is fearful of other dogs, it's very unfortunate, I'm sorry to hear that, but at the same time, what I would be doing is going out and just saying, screw that, like let's get better, let's try to find some more calmer, confident dogs that will help your dog gain confidence as well. Um, let's see this one. Falling out of summer ass, my dog whines and barks around other, oops, sorry around other dogs and people like he's really anxious how do i improve my leadership skills um just on the leash so getting your dog on the leash and teaching them to sit and teaching them to stay um, as you conduct business as you say okay you're gonna stay right here i'm gonna go talk to that person i'm gonna handle this i'm gonna handle that i think when it comes down to your dog being anxious around other dogs you have to you have to really be respectful and empathetic to the to the situation of the what's going on. I mean, if your dog is anxious around other dogs and you go into an environment where the dogs are running around and getting crazy, then that's going to be a problem. That's not fair for your dog. It's unrealistic for your dog not to be anxious in that situation. So I think it's the same thing I just talked about is getting around the right people, getting around the right dogs to make your dog um, not anxious, and then you working on your obedience to get a job. Like if you don't have a job and they're just like, hey, show up to work. Think about it. This is big, guys. Let's think about this for a second. Show up to work. And it's like, okay, um, here's, here's, the, here's the address. Show up to work. Okay. What do you want me to do? Uh, show up to work. And then you get to work. You don't know how to clock in. You don't know who's in charge. You don't know who works there. You don't know any of your tasks. You're going to sit around with your head cut off and run around. Give them things to do. The more you give your dog stuff to do, the less anxious they will be, the less... Um, frustrated things will be, uh, be the more, the more that's in your toolbox, the more you're going to have control and build relationships. So training with your obedience is the micro, the macro is your relationships going to get better because of that. Um, Laura, I did a video on dog parks. Um, if you guys are interested in my dog park view, uh, let me know in the comments and I'll talk about it, but I did do a video on that. My dog doesn't stop barking when I tell her to stop. I tried sending her to her place, but then she barks on her place. She won't take treats or toys. I don't mind the bark, but how do I get her to stop? We well, just have to, you have to think about it like this. And you, got, you guys have to realize that like I got into dog training very organically. I didn't say, hey, I want to be a dog trainer. I started a business simply off of the serendipity of my inheritedly uh, my inheritance of, of, of ability to work with animals. I was very good with it, it was since a very early age. I was been four, we have pictures of me when I was three or four years old. I've just always been connected to animals, so that's what I wanted to do with my job. So take this with a grain of salt when I say this, but at the end of the day, um, everybody on this earth learns through consequence. So you have to think about what are you doing to your dog? And not necessarily doing. So I don't want to say like, oh, am I correcting? Am I, no, you know, am your dog afraid of you? None of that has anything to do with it. You just have to say, if your dog's doing something, like your kid's drawing on the wall with a Sharpie, and you go, hey, kid, stop. Stop doing that. And they go, what are you going to do? That's what you're dealing with. You have to figure out what's applicable to you and your dog and your comfort and your comfort zone and what makes sense and what's fair to your dog and of course what's humane to your dog for them to understand like that's you don't want them to do that anymore. It's called operant conditioning, um, rewarding good behavior when they're good. Like, hey buddy, good job on your test. Correcting bad behavior when it happens. That's what creates a good leader. You kick the principal, spit on your teacher, and ran away you are then going to get punished for that because if you don't get punished, you're never going to learn. So that's just my belief and how I work with animals because that's I know what that's that works good for me. If we ignore bad behavior and we don't teach bad behavior when it happens or we don't teach uh, the thing that we're in charge of uh, that it's wrong, they're never going to learn. So you're actually enabling that behavior if you continue to let it happen. So anyway, this is Lakota. If you guys haven't met Lakota, she's my duchy that we were talking about earlier. She's a crazy girl. But I love her dearly. She's very fun to train, and she's she's been the star of my videos recently. But she's she's a crazy girl. Oh, thank you. Um, APS, my year and a half old border collie, barks and whines for attention when we have guests over, vacuuming, raking in the garden. Um, she barks and whines for two plus hours. Same thing I just talked about. What are you doing to correct the behavior? 
good example of that is Lakota just jumped up on this little farmhouse bench that we have. She licked my face and I rewarded her for all of that. Now you have to understand that that's not dog training. That's my relationship with my dog. I have the ability to send her away, to send her to her crate and get her to do whatever I want her to do at any given time. Actually, let me show you. Koda, come here, sweetheart. Let me show you. Come here. Good. So she, she comes up here. She gives me all this love and she's like, I love you, right? So she, I'm, I'm, this, is, this is my dog. I'm allowing her to do this because I said it was okay. I have control. I can tell her to do whatever I want her to do and she will do that. You have to be careful when you ask your dog to do these types of things like this to get up in your face because she'll want to do this to my friends, family, and other people. But, Koda, get your crate. Bye-bye. Good girl. Crate. Good girl. Break. Go to break. Good. So you get the idea. Um, being able to control all of that is important. So I talked about that a lot. Um, actually, not a lot, but I, I do talk about that. That training doesn't... We've had people say... You know, for an example, like if you saw my, my dog come up and do this. Like if you watch any other professional in the dog training world, what their, what their dogs do has a good, has a good, like if, you, if you're watching a dog training video with a professional dog trainer and they're working with their own dog for four months and their dog still isn't listening and you still can't get them to do stuff, um, you know, you have to be realistic about that and you have to be... Um, clear about like what's happening there. Like with her, she jumps up, she gives me all this love and attention. I love my dog. I'm okay with that. But you saw that I'm like, see ya, bye-bye. Am I able to do that? So you have to have balance. That's what my, that's what my world is about, is about balance. Um, we're going to take a couple more questions here. If you guys have them, leave them here. Um, and then I want to talk about uh, an opportunity here on YouTube for you guys. So we have... Um, Somebody, somebody brought it to my attention. Um, we, I have a Patreon account, which a lot of people ask me, because in year 2020, we have really been gearing up to go. I don't play Animal Crossing, no, Christina. Um, in year 2020, we were gearing up to do a lot of really cool stuff with a lot of really cool people. All of them have been pretty much canceled until further notice because of this, which kind of stinks. But um, we were taking YouTube to the next level. Um, we upped our production. We've hired new people for that. Really exciting times, but unfortunately we had to put everything on delay, which is why you're here, <laughs> hanging out with me live, uh, drinking coffee with me on a Sunday. I appreciate you guys for doing that. But um, so a lot of people say, hey, Tom, how can I support you? How can I, how can I support what you're doing? How can I, whatever? And of course, the first thing is, is just, you know, showing your love to me on, on, on here on YouTube to let me know you're liking what I'm doing and you're giving me feedback on you're enjoying it. Um, I would probably do it regardless if there was nobody watching because I love what I do. But at the same exact time, I appreciate your feedback. But so now we're, we're creating an online members only here on YouTube. If you guys aren't familiar with that, basically what an online members thing is, is we're going to create uh, a YouTube community in my channel and I'm going to be uh, doing these live Q&As with you guys once a week, as well as doing live training. First time I've ever done it in my entire career where I'm actually going, so the, the videos that you guys see online, we're actually going to do live. Um, so it's going to be full sessions from start to finish for my members only um, people. Um, it's gonna be very inexpensive per month. Um, so it's gonna be probably 20-ish dollars um, and you guys are gonna be able to hang out with me in a different way. So if you do um, do like a monthly thing, basically, we are going to hang out once a week for sure like this. Um, you're gonna get uh, all the free merch not free merch, but all the all the new looks at all the merch first. So you're going to have the opportunity to buy all the merch before it goes live to everyone else. As well as, uh, again, we're going to go once a week live in my facility about training new things and working with clients once we're able to do that again. 
So um, I'm going to be announcing that here on, in the community. Um, once, once that's live, that's going to be another opportunity for you guys. Because as you guys can see, there's hundreds and hundreds of people asking questions. I can't get to them all, unfortunately. Um, I'm spending over an hour here with you guys. Um, but we're going to be doing that. Uh, it's going to be a monthly thing. So you do get stuff. You do get more access to me. It's more intimate, if you will. Um, we get to hang out on a, on a different note without hundreds of people. Um, and it, it also is just a way for you guys to support what we're doing. Um, you know, this is not cheap to go out and fly and do all this stuff because um, we have we have new things that we're doing in 2020 with uh, nonprofits that I'm really excited about. Um, you know, all that stuff costs a ton of money: production, flights, staffing, um, cars, hotels. All that stuff is thousands of dollars. People don't realize just for you guys. Um, so so it's another way for you guys to support. Um, in my No Bad Dogs program, as well as just get some more stuff online and give back to the community. So anyway, <clears throat> let's see. All right, let's answer a couple more questions, and then I think it's, uh, let's see. Chappie asked, my nine-year-old dog is reactive to dogs. She doesn't know, uh, but she wasn't like that when she was younger. Could be uh, hearing. It could be sight. It also could be just maturity. Just like with us, um, I guarantee you, your 60 to 90-year-old grandparent or dad or whatever is not going to want to go and run around the bases with you and kickball because they mature and they change just like humans do. How do I get, Trisha asked, how do I get my nine month old to stop eating the wood and mulch in the yard? Place fetch and tug for 10 minutes and it's back to the yard. She'll get out and pick it right back up. Uh, get a long line on and get a martingale or a, or, or, or a slip collar or some kind of collar to pop her. Um, as she's doing that. It's a very good question, um, especially with puppies. They want to teeth, and wood is, is nice for their teeth. Um, may taste good too, so um, just correct them for it. But ultimately, like I think that they'll grow out of that. Work on your leave it. Work on your impulse control. Um, let's see. Victoria asks, my dog is five months old and tends to bite the leash very aggressively when we try to take the leash out of his mouth. Um, work on your out and be calm. I can guarantee you... A lot of, I don't want to say guarantee, that's, that's not good with animals, but I get normally, historically, Victoria, what people do when a dog does that is they grab the leash, they go, leave it out, no, and they shake it, and they, you're playing tug. Make sure when your dog does that, you kill everything that, that exists as far as reactivity goes. You work on your out separately without the leash so they know what you want them to do, and then don't get overwhelmed and overworked. If you look at them and yell at them and shake that tug just as much as they do, they're going to want to continue to play tug with you. So be very careful how you deal with that. Um, <clears throat> Andrew, how do you stop a dog from pulling on the leash? I have probably 10 to 15 videos on that. I would recommend going to view those. Um, I have a two-year-old German Shepherd Malinois mix, very behaved and heals very well, but is still reactive to other dogs, runners, bikers. Um, what's the best they would do? Seth, it's a good question. Just work on your leave it, man. I mean, realistically, there's like no secret sauce to that. You're just going to have to continue to practice that. Um, again, like same thing with the drawing on the board or on the wall with permanent marker. If, if you're correcting your dog for doing these behaviors and it's happening, um, and it's not working, you're gonna have to switch it up a little bit to see like what works for you and your dog. But I would be working on leave it and telling your dog to, to not be able to do that. And you have to just think realistically, like do they care about this correction or punishment or do they not? Think about it like child psychology. And, and when I say this guys, I do know that it's a little bit different, but mentally for us, you have to think that if you're, if you're asking, if you're punishing somebody for doing something and they do not care, they don't care, you're not gonna teach them. So think about that. Um, and then again, for all these questions, you guys do know I have an online academy. You can visit the link in the description right now below if you want to work with me online directly just like this. Um, there's still some spots um, and take advantage of my wide open schedule because of the coronavirus. Um, <clears throat> all right. Currently use harness for an 11 pound Min pin mix, do you recommend a, a prong or an e-collar for a dog this size? Yeah, you can use a micro prong collar. So Julie, you can go on our Amazon affiliate link, which is in the description below. It gives you all of the recommended um, collars and you can get a, a, a micro prong collar. I, I think the 2.25 is gonna be a little big. So you can get the one right below that. I would recommend going to maybe not on Amazon. Um, 
but uh, maybe leave a comment after this and I'll, I'll guide you. Um, all right, we're going to take a couple more. Uh, my one and a half year old Rottweiler attacked a dog that was attacking my other dog. Bad off leash situation, yeah. Uh, now she is aggressive to most dogs. How can I fix this behavior? First thing I would do is separate them when you're training outside on this because um, I think it's probably more of the pack mentality that's going to create the PTSD, if you will, more than the other dogs. So I would get that one dog that has a lot of problems with the other dog and go out and start working on confidence building. Lots of like this type of stuff, like, you know, positive reinforcement, good girl, good boy, life is okay, getting around um, controlled dogs that aren't off leash and recreating that, that uh, obedience and recreating that relationship with the dog. All right. All right, guys, I think, uh, I, think, I think we're at 65 minutes and counting. I appreciate you guys very much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful Sunday. Stay safe. Uh, stay quarantined. Uh, hopefully the world gets over this as soon as we can. Um, I appreciate you guys uh, providing me with escapism to answering your questions. I'm grateful for you watching. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this, if you like this, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. After this video is posted, leave a comment below and let me know um, that you guys uh, are watching. And also, if you have your other dog training questions, leave them in the comments below. Um, the online thing that we're going to be doing here on YouTube is going to be going live within the next 30 days, I would say. So it gives you an opportunity to work with me a little closer. And then, of course, you guys can visit me uh, online and work with me directly uh, from all over the world. There's no limitations to working with me online. And we can talk about your dog and we can talk about the problems um, and go over it. And, and talk about what your goals are. Talk to you guys next time. Thanks. Peace.